Welcome back everyone to the HWBOT World Series 2016. This is now the second game, the second semi-final for the Extreme Overclicker here in Yogyakarta in Indonesia. I'm Trufan from Overclicking TV and for this game I will be joined by Bildzoid from UK. Hey Bildzoid, are you still going good? Yeah, I'm doing great, thanks. Awesome. So I can't wait to see this next game. Uh, that will be quite interesting to see what the two contestants can pull out. Uh, so let's uh, you know have a quick recap on uh, what the what the guys are actually doing here. Oh, Bidzoid, you're gone. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, I was supposed you're... to answer that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. So here we go. We have uh, Rev OC yeah. against Azan. Uh, so who is Rev OC? By uh, it, it seems to be like quite an, of an outsider. Yeah, uh, Rev OC is a new extreme overclocker. He's currently ranked 40th in Indonesia. He managed to qualify yesterday for the competition we're having here today uh, on a borrowed motherboard. So you know he knows his stuff if he can do do uh you know qualify for a top level competition like this on a motherboard he never used before so yeah but he's he's completely All new right. to uh ln2 overclocking we've never seen him before doing uh you know extreme overclocking so this will be very interesting to see what he manages to do uh in this semi final his opponent is going to be Hazan who's the first in Indian Misha, and he is very well known because well he's the first in the in, uh, first in, in Indonesia. He is the overclocker in Indonesia. He's also very well ranked worldwide at 22nd in the world. Um, he's been benching LN2 for quite a while. Uh, he's even benchmarked with uh, liquid uh, liquid helium, which is something very very rare to see, uh, since that stuff is reserved for only the most extreme of extreme uh, overclocking attempts. Uh, and yeah, so he has a very, very, uh, you know, very big history of extreme overclocking. So we basically have the, one of the best guys in Indonesia going up against one of the newest extreme overclockers in Indonesia. That, that's going to be very, very interesting to see how this goes. I can't, I can't wait to see that match. Thank you very much for the introduction. Let's get into the judge for the beginning of this match. We will have to, they will have to choose the, the different benchmark and uh, this is the process we will be seeing in the next few seconds. Oh, Asman from HWBot will be the judge for this competition, doing the draw for the benchmark and announcing everything that needs to be done. I just got the information that they need two minutes, uh, maybe making sure that all the latest uh, drivers are installed on the system, make sure that everyone has the same chance. Can't wait to see that match because Rev OC is really a big outsider here. We never saw him in any competition, live competition like this before. That's going to be interesting to see. Out of the six benchmarks, which one they will choose, actually, or actually, which one they will veto. Let's have a look at uh, quickly the benchmark choice they can have. They can choose X, uh, they will have the choice, uh, actually, the draw between XTU, 3D Mark 11 Physics, Cinebench R11.5, Geekbench 3, Max Memory Clock, or Cine Cinebench R15. Out of these six benchmarks, one will be picked, and one veto per overclocker will be available. Of course, they can veto only one, and they will just have to move on with the system. All right, so let's go to the benchmark selection. We have six benchmarks. Uh, memory Clock, Cinebench R15, Geekbench 3, 3D Mark 11 Physics, Cinebench 11.5, and XTU. The CPU and cache limit is uh, 5.5 gigahertz with 10 megahertz uh, up and down. Uh, okay, so let's go for the first draw. Uh, 3D Mark 11 Physics. Are you okay with that or? Or do you want to veto it? 
You're okay with that? How about you? Yeah, all right, so it's 3D Mark 11 physics. All right, so hold on until we get the sign. So this seems that uh, they won't have the feedback for the uh, for the scoreboard, but the scoreboard is ready, and they can they can go whenever you want. All right, three, two, one, start. And here we go for 3D Mark 11 physics between Rev OC and Hassan. So basically, what will be going on for the next, for the first few minutes of that 30 minutes game? Well, uh, last game we saw some really early scores, but I don't think we're going to be seeing the same again, just because that that really isn't a very popular strategy um, from past uh, past uh, hardware hardware bot uh, tour events. So I don't think we'll be seeing any tours right off the right off the bat as pe as they both try to you know systems down, uh, get the systems booting, get everything running the way they like. Um, right, know we have a first score. Can we see the CPU Z? So first score from Oh, that Azan. was fast. <laughs> <laughs> Proven wrong once again. Eight, four, two. So here we are, the two overclockers have to cool down their system to, uh, with liquid nitrogen. So when we start the round, they have to be above zero degree to make sure that everyone have the same chance and then they can dial in the settings and go down the system. So, Bildred, what are you uh, expecting Rebosi to do? Is using the uh, the MSI motherboard against uh, Azan that is using the Asus motherboard? Yeah, I'm not really uh, sure what to expect because Rebosi is like brand new to the extreme overclocking scene. He did have a very impressive showing early on. Uh, 3D Mark 11 physics is pretty much a CPU benchmark. So again, we're going to see very similar. I think we're going to see something very similar to what we saw last match with, you know, it being completely about CPU and memory overclocking. Um, so now th this will be interesting. I do believe 3D Mark 11 might, 11 physics might be a little bit lighter and uh, Geekbench on the memory, uh, memory requirements um so yeah it, it really really depends what i'm not really sure what to expect here right now uh it's very very early into the match right now um we could see him you know sub not submitting any scores very early on just to not show uh how he's doing or to, to his opponent or he might um try to beat Hazan every step of the way. I personally think the every step of the way would be more interesting to watch, but really depends on what he chooses to do. And hopefully he doesn't run into any issues that would prevent him from being able to keep up. So we are seeing the screen of Hassan right now and we have 
a chance to see both screen side by side. So Azan is using the uh, Asus motherboard while uh, RevOS is using the MSI motherboard. Azan already have a score on the scoreboard. There is 26 minutes left in this game. So, Bildzoid, uh, we are seeing some uh, different approach than the previous run in here. Uh, what would be special about 3DMark 11 physics uh, as, as a benchmark just based on the CPU uh, performance? Well, it is, you know, it's purely a multi-threaded test. It has a fixed uh, runtime, so you can't really uh, save time by going faster through it. Um, it does use the GPU a little bit, so it, it might have some higher heat output. Basically fully stresses the CPU section of the CPU, and it also applies, you know, extra GPU load, so it'll run a bit harder. Uh, not sure if, if we'll see anything different on the memory front, because it'll be, again, the same thing act as we saw in, you know, the first game where you want to get the memory like you want to both hit the right bandwidth but you also need to keep the latency low enough that you know you, you don't have a uh, loss of performance you can't just go out the frequency and say oh this is going to be great doesn't always get you the best performance you have to balance the memory very very uh, very carefully to get the maximum amount of performance Guys on the live chat, uh, you, I remind you that we are doing a raffle on the live chat at our next target of 3,100 people following us on Twitch. So go on our twitch.tv slash overclicking TV channel and follow us in there. Once we arrive at 3,100 followers, we will be doing a raffle on the stream. Don't forget that you can... A new score by Azen, 12,540. So far, we are seven minutes into this OC game, and that is the first, the only score that actually Azen, uh, the second score that Azen is putting up on the board. Revosi still have no score whatsoever. This is gonna be quite interesting to see how he can come back. He's the complete outsider here today. So here we are, we have uh, Rev OC benching to the Merc 11 physics while Azan is back into the OS. Let's see the score 11, for Rev OC. 11,363. That's the first score of Rev OC on this scoreboard. That is uh, uh, not as good as Azan, but it's a good score to be put there as a placeholder. Gonna want 
Hazan. Seems like Bitsuit, you are actually three minutes behind on the, what you can see. Right now, we have uh, a tight, um, not not that tight battle, but Azan is improving his core from uh, now 12,676 points. They're using 3 Mark 11 physics. This is just a subtest of the benchmark. So basically, 3 d Mark 11 is one of the benchmarks made by Future Mark. It's a benchmark being used a lot by uh, the overclockers here. And they are, of course, a uh, different test in that. There is a graphic test, there is a regular test. And uh, most of the time, I, we just use some of them. And this one, we just use the physics test, just putting pressure on the CPU. Most of the, if you want a complete score on the benchmark, so when they finish the run, we can see that um, <clears throat> they have this um, this uh, gonna say that this uh, just squared like the dash dash dash. That means the total score is not being produced. There's a good reason for that. It's because you need to run the uh, you need to run the complete benchmark, the four game test, and the physics test. Let's see Rev OC score. Twelve three forty. Hazan, 12888. Oh, Rebusi made a good jump on the scoreboard, but Hazan is still in the lead and now scoring 12888. 12, Check check. We are having a guest here on the side uh, of the of the competition. Hey, Xiala, how are you doing? Hey, Truf, how's it going? Very good. Uh, um, so <laughs> it's been well quite here. an exciting start. Huh? You know, it's uh, it's a very interesting uh, competition so far. Seems like uh, Hassan is starting to uh, to to have a, a better swing at it than uh, he had yesterday. Even though yesterday was not that terrible in the end, he did a third. But you know, it was a. Uh, it was very conservative and his approach to it was also conservative so today he seems to be a little bit more more into it and uh, he doesn't really have that much choice you know if you think about it he um, he must win this match to to continue and it's the second time now second time he's attempting to uh, to qualify in a world series stop he went to uh, the asia stop at computex uh, now trying here at home in yogya which is actually his hometown um so it's um he, he really really got to win no no choice so currently, as you can see, running the, the test, almost done. And meanwhile, we have our dear friend Revo C, who's in the BIOS. So he's uh, dialing down the memory timings. So you have several memory timings. Maybe build it. That would be a good occasion if uh, if you hear me <laughs> to to run down through the different memory timings and things you can actually adjust there. What what sort of things can be done with timings? Uh, I can hear you just fine. Thanks. Uh, so memory timings basically dictate uh, the rate. So memory has its frequency and then it has its timings. So the timings basically denote the amount of that the memory takes to do something. Uh, in clock cycles. So say we have um, one gigahertz memory clock, right? And you have CL10, basically means that it's gonna take uh, uh, clock cycles to do a uh, to do a column access. Uh, cast la CL stands for cast latency, which is column access strobe. 
latency and basically that tells you how how long it takes for the memory to access a certain uh the requirements for uh, uh finding a memory address so uh all the different timings have different you know that they basically control different uh interactions in the memory relative to the clock speed so if you lower your timings weights less cycles to do something to loosen the timings it takes more cycles to do something but loosening the timings usually will let you go higher on the frequency of the memory um whereas lowering the timings will allow you to basically get the highest performance for that given clock of the memory um both you know both higher frequency and lower timings both cause instability issues both require extra voltage uh also the the timings and the frequencies that you can hit differ massively depending on what memory ic you're using so here today we're seeing micron memory uh whereas uh you have samsung also makes memory uh and hynix makes memory uh memory chips and so basically hynix is basically hynix memory is better known for running uh relatively like your primary you, you also have several types of timing so you have your primaries that's the ones you'll usually you see in the specs which will be like say uh 1600 you know ddr3 1600 cl 999 uh, and then you'll have the 999 24 or 27 so those are your primaries then you have all your different sub timings and Hynix memory generally does relatively really high clocks, relatively good primaries, but to get those really really high clocks, your sub your timings like your secondaries and your tertiaries are usually very very loose. So for a given clock, Hynix is actually relatively slow to some other memory uh, memory ICs uh, like say Samsung or Micron. And Micron on the other hand, at least for DDR4 from what I've seen, doesn't clock as high, but can generally be timed lower. Uh, depending uh -huh. on the ICs. Now, the ones we're seeing in this co competition uh, uh, right now, they they basically don't... Th these are double-sided stakes with uh, ICs on both sides, so these actually seem relatively badly. So we're seeing people running 13, you know, thir uh, 3333 uh, and 3400 at CL14 to eight, uh, with uh, basically 14, 18, 18. Um, which isn't really that great in the grand scheme of DDR4 memories because um, you then have things like the Samsung ICs which can do th that same clock at say 12, 12, 12 oh, much uh, tighter, timings. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, so you can get much tighter timings and it's at the same clock but those much tighter timings get you way more performance. And then once you also factor in all the other timings that you have other than the primaries that are also uh that just gets you a massive difference in performance so yeah basically so, yeah. it's a balancing act yeah so three you can have a lot of frequency 11, or you can have really tight right. you can have really tight timings so, the best so 3D is Mark to find that physics, balance for your specific memory yeah. 3d mark 11 physics would actually be uh so being very cpu cpu dependent the guys will have no choice to actually dial down those timings and try to best, best, uh, find the best fits, right, basically? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think for, for uh, yesterday when they were doing GPU benchmarks more, we were seeing much higher memory clocks than we are seeing today, whereas today we're seeing much lower timings than we were seeing yesterday. So I th yesterday I think the most people were aiming for around 3400 and 3400 up, which is the limit on these specific memory ICs, whereas today most people seem to be aiming for uh, going below for, uh, CL14 uh, and getting the timings as low as possible. Maybe it's the fact that they are actually competing at the more, a little bit higher level of the competition. The guys are pushing their kits a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit tighter, um, I suppose. Yeah. It's also going to be interesting. What what would be uh, your approach uh, as uh, benching uh, 3D Mark 11 physics? What what would be your strategy aside of uh, taking care of the timings? What other things should the overclocker also keep an eye on? Also, uh, interestingly enough, three the, you know the three physics tests actually are. What? Uh, it's a Peter talking. No worries. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I thought he was going to announce a score, so I stopped. Uh, Anyway, He's going um, to announce a score. Yeah, no. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Checking CPU Z. Incoming. Score incoming. 
So 12,982.4 Azan. That's a new, uh, the... new best score. Hassan is uh, keep on improving looks... and taking a bit more lead uh, by by the runs. Uh. Slowly but uh, progressively, I would say. Yeah. Uh, no, so for, for, for 3D Mark, actually, Dose plays a pretty important uh, role in it. In like, my own testing, I actually prefer running my 3D Marks on Windows 7, just because my physics on Windows 7 is ahead of my physics on Windows 8, uh, which might be because I haven't really like mastered Windows 10 and 8 optimizations yet. Um, but yeah, you can do actually a lot to get good performance on physics. Um, by uh, tweaking windows. So we can actually see uh, Hazan doing some of that right now. Or, yeah. well, in the past. I don't know how, how far behind I, I am. We're actually, we actually still on his screen, so that's uh, that's uh, exactly right. He's actually rebooting now back in the BIOS. I don't know, launching the benchmark, all right. I thought he was doing a small, quick reboot. So there's about nine minutes and 50 seconds left in this match. That's actually not so much time if you consider that uh, it takes about a minute a minute to do a reboot and launching the match mark if you're really fast at it. Uh, the time to redial things in the BIOS takes another minute. So you probably have um, about uh, three more shots at it, I would say, within the within the realm of nine minutes, which is not so much really if you're in a, in a competition like that where you have to decide very quick, especially if you need to, for whatever reason, clear CMOS or anything, then you, you would be completely... Uh, completely screwed yeah yeah well luckily most manufacturers now offer that you can save your overclocking profiles and hope that they, they're using those because clearing cmos without saving profiles you know would just do so much <laughs> on top of your profile yeah well yeah. It depends on how, how it depends on the bio simulation i know on msi it's a couple seconds to save to save your last settings assuming yeah. you're not typing in a new name so, yeah, it all like, depends would, how, how intuitive the design to, is. <laughs> what I would do for, for for my my profile saving would be just do like experimental, which would be my current profile that I'm working with, right? I'd have a base profile on the motherboard already from my pre-testing, and um, yeah, I'd which... have an experimental profile, and basically whenever I change it, uh, settings just before I reboot, it would be go to the you know pro, uh, save profile and don't change the name, don't touch any of the. Uh, just save yeah. profile f10 enter and it should Which, actually be the case right like, because sure. the guys have enough time to to prepare before before they, they actually come here for the matches they can prepare the board they have the yeah. they can prepare on the same yeah. cpus or something similar so and they know all the benchmark that will be out of uh, be able to be drawn so they should have enough uh, enough i mean enough time to to prepare everything they would need to prepare but then again yeah, you yeah. never know yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and ms MSI boards also offer a really convenient feature. Well, MSI and I think Asus does this as well at this point. I'm not sure. I haven't checked. Um, but you can save a lot of your BIOS profiles onto a flash stick. So can, even yeah. though most motherboards don't offer more than don't, most motherboards don't offer more than like eight, eight profiles, if you have six different benchmarks and you decide to make six different profiles for every, every <laughs> single benchmark, you know you need to run out of profiles at that point yeah, exactly. on some motherboards. <laughs> So you can still at least, you know, save some of them onto a flash stick and you're still not completely, you know, pr run out of... Sure, you, it'll lose you a little bit of time at the start of the competition when you're loading that profile into the BIOS. But, you know, if if the profile is really, really good, it might be worth that those extra couple seconds that you take at the start. Yep, exactly. So Hazan is back in the BIOS at the moment. Uh, He's touching a bit. He he seems to be hesitating on PCRK, but didn't change anything. Just changed the multiplier a little bit. Booting right now. So yeah, a lot of rebooting here. A lot of uh, because uh, there's uh, things you can't tweak uh, from within Windows, and memory timings are one of the things that you actually don't always have access to. It depends really of the motherboard, the type of support you have, and usually it comes down to uh, having some more specialized software from the manufacturers, right? Yeah, uh, though I do believe ROG motherboards all should support their mem tweak it software. 
Yeah, sure it has it is on has the made yeah, use of it, but for some reason he still goes to the BIOS for some of the stuff. Maybe there's some some very specific well, things a, that a are missing. The time uh, well, a lot of the time the 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 InOS software is a little bit, bit trashy, <laughs> so <laughs> um, sometimes it's better to go through the BIOS because uh, I know some settings, you know, that they'll just crash just because you're trying to change them in the OS yeah. instead of in the BIOS. So th there is always benefits to, to to trying to do it all the way through the BIOS. Yeah. So yeah. All right, We're back on both both overclockers rebooting at the moment. This is about five minutes and thirty seconds left. It seems oh, Hassan just just aborted the run and restarts. So we are seeing the game to know who from Rev OC or Azan will go fight uh, Speed Dot fastest in the grand final. Actually, the loser of that game will fight in the XOC Bronze against Bebo Jess. Yeah, Bebo Jess, who wasn't really uh, into his best game today. Um, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's things that happened. He was uh, almost uh, 200 points behind. It's, uh, it wasn't wasn't the best uh, best he had. 102 points sorry, behind. Hassan, on contrary, is um, still dominating Revel C by far, I would say. 12,982 to 12,340. Uh, so that's going to be a big gap for Revel C to catch up. And he better comes up with the right memory, memory timings. It seems both are almost running CPUs at the same frequencies from what I could, uh, could see. Welcome back to everyone that is joining us on the twitch.tv overclocking TV channels. Don't forget that if you give us a follow and we achieve our target for today, we will be doing some live raffle on the live chat. Can't wait for it. Yeah, more 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 raffles and waffles is always welcome, especially when it's with jam and honey. I vote for the jam one, of course. I prefer the honey one. Alright guys, game on who gets the first honey and jam one? <laughs> There's about uh, 3 minutes and 47 seconds left. Uh, that's about one run, I think. One full, one full run, the time to reboot, tweak, do whatever you need and launch the benchmark. Ooh, and it seems uh, Hassan is experiencing some interesting artifacts. So... <laughs> Yeah, his, oh, this... his memory settings probably are royally <laughs> this, screwed at this point. This, this is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> this is art. <laughs> yeah, it's art. It's totally art. It reminds me of one streaming session even uh, Dr. Weez had at some point. Uh, <laughs> having b beautiful multicolor screens. This is something only computers are capable to actually do as an art. If you would try to do the same as a human, it would be kind of difficult. So you would take a lot of special effects in the, in the After Effects or something. Yeah, it's, it's all fun and games with artifacts until you restart your system at stocks and it's still art artifacting. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's when you go from, oh, pretty colors to, oh, damn, the system is <laughs> oh, really, damn. really broken at this point. So, like... Uh, yeah, quite a... similar happened to me on one, one of my LN2 streams with a GPU at Artifacting, and I'm like, oh, that's fine. Um, you know, it's under LN, everything's good. Artifacting is just a part of the deal. Uh, when I rebuilt the GPU for air cooling and turned it on and it Artifacted, that's when I went, well, screw me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't think that this is what happened because here it's mostly, you know, GPUs are a little bit more fragile on LN2 than CPUs. Uh, and this is definitely a memory error, so these should be fine. This is crazy, the games here. Rev OC, 12,340 points. Azan, 12,982 points. Azan is already back in the system. Uh, Rev OC is struggling with his platform, sadly. Uh, he has only a minute and 35 seconds left to restart the system. And oh no, he's quitting or removing some uh, blue paper towel near the run slot. 
you know that's always like this uh, the pressure of the game the guys have to know exactly what they are doing and Azan is already back in it benching his system on 3G Mark 11 physics soon have a new score if he's He's fast, he's gonna be able to get one more score before yeah, before the end the, of this. But sadly his score was not better than the one he already had, so we will have to restart the benchmark. Restart, yeah. He's just hoping for a good run. So basically a, a, a good run is uh, you run the benchmark once, you give a score and say, I rerun the same benchmark with the exact same settings after and you hope for a better score. Yeah. There's actually a few benchmarks that are actually super consistent about scoring like well, some benchmarks you do a second run, they score worse. Some benchmarks you do a, a second run, they score better. Uh, it varies from benchmark to benchmark, but like if you have a badly set up copy of Windows, or even a reasonably stripped down copy of Windows and running Cinebench, for example, a uh, second run will generally score a little bit higher than the first run because of how the benchmark works. Um, and we're actually seeing something similar here with Hazan's 3D Mark 11. This, this score is it. just went up. Yeah, this is it. His score did not uh, improve that much. Rev OC it was didn't... struggling with the system. Final score here Rev OC 12,340 points. Azan 12,982 points. This is the end of this second semi final. This was a tight battle by both of the uh, contestants. It's now time for them to. Make sure to take the picture, the game picture like we call it. And then they will have to move everything back to their desk for the next game to happen. So the next game we will be seeing is the bronze final followed by the uh, gold final or the XOC Grand Final. That was uh, quite interesting to see uh, Rev OC. Of course, Rev OC was the outsider in this game. He's uh, ranked 40 in Indonesia, while Azan is currently number one. Of course, Azan here today displayed an extremely good set of skills. He managed to push the system to its limit. It's really important for uh, for him to show off what he can do. He was at the HWS Asia in Computex earlier this year. He did not manage to win into the final. Let's hope that today in the grand final against Speed.Fastest, he will be able to pull out his magic trick and all his uh, magic, uh, I would have to say magic system, but that's a uh, mag magic magic. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> so here we are, Tim. Tim, come here. Wait, wait, wait. Get it stuck in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, quite an interesting match, of course. Hassan totally dominating it. Um, so right now, they're unmounting the systems. They are going to take 40 minutes, I've been told, because uh, basically, Revocy, who's going to play the, uh, the bronze match, right, needs to dry up his system before he can start again. Uh, there's way too much humidity in the air today. I think it's actually way more than even yesterday. And if you guys watched the stream yesterday, you probably noticed the, the, some of the CPU pots in, uh, in, the, in the battleground here that were completely uh, frozen with a layer of ice. You could not even see their color anymore. Um, so basically, uh, there, there will be a break uh, after that. Um, one thing, they are drawing against CPUs. So it means that uh, as much as... Um, B-Boy will get a new CPU, or actually just got it. Um, Revocy will get a new CPU. They will also both get new memory kits. Um, so that gives them a fair so chance to start again from the start in case, you know, uh, they didn't have, were lucky with the draw. But yeah, I think from what we've seen, it seems that the bins that has, uh, Alva prepared are actually <laughs> fairly fair. and There's not really any problem there. But yeah, then again, that's interesting to see that the draw from C will not be the same from the one he used. So it cannot be the same one he had or the same one that hasn't had. And even though, you know, he might save his profiles and want to start from where he is, um, well, he might be able to use some of that. It doesn't mean that all of it might work really at 100%. So he's going to have to really, um, how do you say, uh, get used to that new system basically because it's comp almost completely a new system uh, besides the motherboard and the, the power supply. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be gonna interesting to, to see fast. as well the benchmark they would have to use for this uh, bronze final. Uh, we didn't add any uh, veto for, for this game. And it went, uh, it went quite fast. Uh, um, what would be your highlight of this game? 
Xiala. You were there uh, running around taking some videos. I think my, my highlight, uh, it was that blue screen from Hassan. That was nice. Um, it's almost, you know, becoming like even the overclockers are just waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, no, it's great. I, I do. Know, Besides that, I think uh, Hassan showed also a very, uh, very good uh, control over the, that Asus board. Uh, he had the advantage, I believe, to be able to set a lot of the things from within Windows directly using that Asus tool, um, which um, Rebel C didn't have the luxury. He had to do everything, all the memory timings, everything regarding memory had to go back to the BIOS. So this means uh, a reboot plus entering the BIOS, saving the BIOS, all that. And that's every time you're basically losing about 30 to 40 seconds, uh, no, depending how fast you on are. The, on the, the 30 minutes game, this is quite important. This is quite important. It, to it just know, adds to up. Uh, yeah, it just adds up in the yeah. end. That's it. So basically, we uh, will see um, what what comes next. Uh, the bronze match is, of course, uh, the bronze match. So we're, we're going to know who from B Boy and Revel C is going to take the the third and fourth place. Uh, I bet my money on B-Boy, but then again, that's a personal opinion. Uh, that if you are for the the outsider, uh, I would recommend you take on Revo C. Uh, tell us in the chat who you actually think is going to win the next match, of course, and uh, we'll see who actually was right or wrong. I mean, like, you guys saw enough from those two guys already. Uh, of course, again, it's going to be a battle between an MSI and an Asus motherboard there, so it's going to be also a very interesting match. And I've, one thing I need to add, actually about the Hassan match. Hassan actually changed the motherboard. He's using an impact today because he decided last minute that actually using the impact would be a, a fair competition strategy. I don't know if it's because he was expecting to uh, be facing B-Boy at but some point or anything. The, in the final, but, maybe. you know, uh, choices are choices. And at that, at that point, you know, he, uh, he made his choice and, uh, and he's not, he didn't brought his other boards. So <laughs> that's the only board he has here. So he would not go back to the... To the um, to the, I think it was had the rampage yesterday. It was using the rampage yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah. So now everyone is. Uh, they've been doing the. They did the draw already uh, on the side. We can't see it here, but they did the draw. So build the What was? Wait, did your, I hear? Yep. Uh, did I hear rampage? Because I think rampages are X99 only. You must have oh, been using it? the extreme or the hero. Oh, yeah. extreme. Oh, extreme, extreme, extreme. Yeah, extreme. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, yeah, lack, okay, that's, that's the lack of sleep that's talking like here. <laughs> <laughs> so the next game well, will be uh, the XOC Bruns final. b Test mm -hmm. against Rev OC. A quite surprising outcome. I was expecting b Test to win his first semi-final. But it's definitely, you know, make the match, win the match. Or you just, no, you, there's no second chance for it. Well, thank yeah. you very much, uh, Timote, for this uh, little update on the different score that we had. Guys, uh, thank you very much for tuning in in this live. The next game is the XOC Bronze Final to know who will be third and the first step on the podiums and who will be going back home with the fourth place. We will take a short break and come back in the next few minutes. Don't forget to give us a follow on Twitch because once we're going to attain, attain our new targets, we will be doing a live waffle on the live chat. Let us know as as, as well if you like the waffle with it uh, on the or jam uh, just uh, keep on asking your question on the live chat we'll be monitoring the live chat all along today to give you answer to your few questions thank you very much guys for tuning in and see you back in the next few minutes